Gather round, lords and ladies. Today I, King Ken, will be reviewing... Fine. Play the intro. Heroes of Might and Magic is a turn-based strategy game developed and published by New World Computing and a release date for DOS on August 31st, 1995, with an updated version released on February of 1996. The plot involves Lord Ironfist fleeing his homeland after his cousin Ragnar has usurped the throne after his uncle, Ragnar's father, killed Ironfist's father for the throne. To add, Ironfist and three others end up on Enroth. The land is unruled and is contested by not only Lord Ironfist, but also the Barbarian Lord Slayer, the Sorceress Queen Lamanda, and the Warlock Lord Alamar. We'll get to each faction a little later. The settings determine quite a bit of how the game will be played, from how many resources you start with to how well the AI plays. If you want an extra challenge, you can turn on King of the Hill. Gameplay is very simple. You take your hero and you can build structures, recruit troops, wander the land for treasures, or fight creatures. When you exhaust all movement, your opponents take their turn. Combat, while easy to learn, is also tricky to master because you want to end combat with as few casualties for your side as possible. Combat starts with the fastest creature, then it progresses to the slowest. You can cast spells to gain a bit of a jump start, but use them wisely because you only get a limited amount. If the odds feel too overwhelming, you can retreat, but save it as a last resort. Surrendering only happens when you face off against another hero. Like I said, easy to learn, hard to master. Castle sieges work the same way, but the attacker gets a catapult while the defender gets a never-ending shooting tower. Luck and morale also play a crucial role as they can make a difference in combat. Luck doubles the damage a creature does, while morale either gains an extra turn or loses the next creature's turn. After combat, you gain experience. In this case, the HP from each creature killed goes towards experience earned. Once you gain enough experience, you go up a level and a random skill goes up as well. You also gain experience by sending the treasure chest to the peasants. Every once in a while, creatures roaming the land may offer their services to join you. Make sure you accept, because if you don't, you'll have to fight them. Most of the time, creatures will be guarding something of value, so make sure you have a strong enough army to fight. Speaking of armies, you're going to need resources to purchase creatures and buildings. The most common resources are gold, wood, and ore. Special resources, crystals, sulfur, gems, and mercury are needed for the mage guilds and more powerful creatures. Each town shares five buildings in common, the Well, Thieves' Guild, Tavern, Shipyard, and Mage Guild. You can also hire new heroes if there is no one around. Just make sure you have enough resources. After seven game days, you'll get the chance to purchase more creatures for your army, but every once in a while, a plague will strike, cutting that week's recruiting in half. Before it slips my mind, let me mention that you only have room for five creature stacks, so choose wisely. Of course there are the neutral creatures, rogues, nomads, ghosts, and genies. Some creatures bring their own special abilities. You can mix and match, but take caution as overdoing it has morale penalties. The creatures you can purchase are aligned to the four factions mentioned earlier. Each faction has their own strengths and weaknesses. The knights gain an extra morale. Barbarians suffer no movement penalty for going over rough terrain. The sorceresses gain extra movement and see it, and the warlocks can see further ahead. The one advantage that the sorceresses and warlocks have is that they start with the spellbook, but the knights and barbarians are cheaper. Artifacts found can make a huge difference in the game. They range from earning extra gold per day to increasing your hero's stats. Along the way, you'll run into obelisks. Their purpose is to reveal the exact location of the ultimate artifact. Find it and it can make an ultimate difference. Speaking of artifacts, there's one in particular called the Fizzbin of Misfortune. To my dismay, the word doesn't exist in the dictionary. Phew, that was quite a mouthful. The graphics are bright, colorful, and the armies have a cartoony look to them, and it works just fine. The soundtrack is also good as each town has its own theme as well as each terrain has something different. While the game is good, there are drawbacks. First, the creatures themselves are cliché. If you've played any other RPG, chances are you'll see at least three of them here. As mentioned before about spells, you only get a certain number of times you can use each spell. If you run out of a particular spell, you have to either head back to town or visit the shrine you got it from. While the animation is fine, it's watching a unit walk backwards that feels weird. If that wasn't weird enough... The flying creatures fly backwards. What is that noise? The... Peanut, I think I'm seeing things. The biggest flaw is that you can't pick which faction to play as. 
I'm surprised that development didn't implement this into the game. Heroes of Might and Magic is a fun game. If you're looking for a strategy game that isn't complex, this game is for you. It gets three stars out of five. If you'll excuse me, I have something to take care of.